Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to the letter. Previously, we took some photos, and one of them may or may not have involved a ghost. Entering the dining hall causes me so much confusion. It is dark. For a moment, I thought the electric work is not up to par. That clearly is not the case, as every other room is bright with artificial light. Finding the light switch is a monumental task, considering the size and my unfamiliarity with the room. To make matters worse, the darkness grants the room a different atmosphere, eerie and frightening. It takes longer than I thought to find the switch, something that will have to be rectified later on. My skin starts to prickle, and there's a distinct feeling of being watched. It unsettles me, and only spurs me on in my search. Luke's gonna be sitting at the table, in the complete darkness, and he's like, I need to make this as atmospheric as possible, the light's gonna be off, I'm not gonna be able to see the thing. When she turns the lights on, it's going to be really effective. Just you wait and see. So wait, I'm, I'm calling that right here. And when I do open the lights, there is a hiss. I'll turn the lights down, woman! I told you! There at the end of the hall is my beloved husband with his face in one hand and a glass in the other. Perhaps I can let it go if it's only one glass of wine. However, I can feel myself go livid after seeing the toxic green liquid gleam mockingly at me. Luke, what? Are you drinking absinthe? You know what the doctor said. Absinthe, Luke. Are you actively trying to kill yourself? Because if you are, we can just hit you with a bloody car! <laughs> I remember that one ending from earlier. Honeybee, buttercup. Not too loud, please. Besides, it's Lelouch. Not too strong. Just hair of the dog that bit me. Helps with the hangover, dearest. You drank? When? This morning, love. Don't be mad. I'm mad. I just needed a few drinks, having to deal with those simpletons. You have a problem. And maybe I had one too much. You don't see me whinging about you leaving me to handle them on my own. I had to attend the photo shoot and interview with Luxury Living. You know that. <sighs> Let's not make this about me, Luke. If you guys have so much money, why don't you hire someone to work with the, con the contractors and movers? This is about you and your drinking problem and... Oh, I don't know, Hana, darling. What if my drinking problem, as you like to call it, is linked to you? Wow, that's that's a bit much, buddy. If we think about it that way, this discussion is about you. That was pretty mean of you, leaving me alone to do all the work like that. You can't use the interview as an excuse either, honey. I was informed the moment your little interview was done. So, what was it then, hmm? What were you doing? I was making a save file, and then saying something that's gonna obviously make you mad. I was talking with Zachary, the photographer for Luxury Living. Yeah, he's almost halfway down now. I have no reason to tell lies. It's not like I'm guilty of anything. But, as Luke ex Luke's expression turns, he makes me feel like I am actually am to blame for something. I wonder if he's at the gardens if he catches you in a lie. He has a way of making me laid bare with just a look. That had really struck me when we first met years ago. That giant negro? You were having a secret meeting behind my back and it was with him? What are you implying? I'm implying nothing. I'm just... worried. You know better than to trust those media types, Buttercup. He must have been really friendly to occupy your time like that. He was, technically, yeah. But all he's looking for is his next big headline. He's a photographer for an interior design magazine. Doesn't matter. You let one little thing slip, one wrong move, and it'll blow up in the telly in the morning. He'll go to his journalist friends to gossip and make a quick quid. His eyes were the first thing I noticed about him. They were like nature, the grass and the trees, wonderful and breathtaking. Now as I look at him, nothing but the same sheet of green as a bloody damn drink in his hand. He was a perfect gentleman, Luke. I can't say the same for you as of recent. Excuse me again? We're talking about you, Hana. No, I am pretty sure we were talking about you and your drinking problem, Luke, right? Hangover for Gone during the course of his little spat, the man jumps to his feet and seethes. It looks like he's barely stopping himself from throwing the nearest thing he can find. Not, the, not that Napoleon Abouve. Oh, it is not a problem. I can stop whenever I want. Stop now. And even if it was... 
I think you can very well stay out of it, as it only affects my own kidneys or liver or whatever the bloody hell that shite pollutes. Whatever aftermath that occurs because of your little chit-chat with the Negro affects the both of us, however. Look, Luke. Nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. Well, now I think I'm getting jealous. Or I would be if it weren't for this damn headache. Maybe you should drink more. Maybe. Supper is spent in silence, nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand feast has been served. Well, grander than usual anyway. Most likely due to Luke's complaints of stress. A platter of nat native oysters for starters. And tranche of turbo with purple sprouting broccoli. Lemon capers and anchovy sauce for mains. To finish all off, black tea and golden syrup sponge pudding with custard. That's a very good looking food. Art wise. Real life, it'd actually be a little somewhat mediocre. It looks, sounds fancy, but it's not as fancy as you think. But when our appetites are appeased and the plates are cleared away, Luke stands, kisses me goodnight, and leaves me to stare at my half-empty cup. Lonely in the lull of the night, I sit in a house too big and too empty, foreign and unwelcoming. Even with its warm tone and homely decor, it feels cold. There's no need for tears, however. I know I can get through this like every other obstacle I've ever faced before. Was this relationship? It's only amplified by the big empty house. This is a real psychological effect in real life. Psst, I'm whispering. I don't know why. This is a minor setback in what I hope will be a long and happy life. To remind myself that this is a place for is for Luke and for our future children fills me with a renewed vigor. Besides, it looks like someone is having a cry already. Oh no. The wailing is far away and muffled. Yet at the same time, it shakes me to my very core as I hear it. As if the suffering is just standing right beside me. Hearing it sends a chill down my spine and makes my skin prickle with goosebumps. Who is that? This is... This is a good idea. This is this is a top tier idea right here. Curiosity sinks in as I follow the sorrowful sound into the kitchen. And into the wine cellar hatch. I am curious and concerned, but there is no way I'm going down into a dark and humid underground. That's a good idea. I'm not as enthusiastic as Luke who considers himself quite the connoisseur. However, I also cannot bring myself to go to bed with this racket going on. Just leave it. Maybe maybe light a fire down there or something. Throw a torch. If there's one of the household help, they will surely need some talking. Do we have household help? After all, this wouldn't be the first time I've gone and found one of the maids sobbing their eyes out. For one thing or another. As professional as our staff are, they are still human. More often than not, it was either Johans or, who, or I who would calm them down, who would help them figure out how to go on about things. Unfortunately, I'm not in high spirits right now, so I'm not as wholly benevolent. So I will save the game, because I know one is specifically a death trap. I will actually come back to this, George. Let's open the hatch for now. Uh, I'm gonna see what happens, and then we'll make a save after there, then we'll call them out. Branching here. Open the hatch. A oh, morbid curiosity of a death trap. I may not be going down. There's no point in talking through closed doors. Or hatches, in this case. The thing refuses to budge at first until there's a soft click, and it easily swings free. As I lift up the hatch to look down into the cellar, a sense of uneasiness washes over me. Oh, oh, this is such a terrible idea. Who would ever choose such a thing? It isn't just a sudden onset of vertigo and nausea, but also the darkness. It's suffocating. And as I look down, it feels as if it's looking back at me. I worry that something will suddenly pull me into the deep. Oh, it will. I can hear her whispering. Help me calling for me. She wants me. Needs me. She wants to drown me, pull me down and suffocate me in her embrace until I sink to the bottom. A deep abyss awaits, inviting it foreboding. There's a lot of different ways of talking about a dark basement. She's calling to me from in there, isn't she? And I do want to help, I do. 
but the shadows starting to creep out and a feeling of apprehension keeps me in place. Have you ever seen Evil Dead? You know what happens when you go into the dark basement? Already, it paints the room in a darker light. There's a lurching sensation, and the feeling that follows after is hard to explain. It feels like I'm watching myself from the sidelines. I spectate to my actions or lack of thereof. I want myself to snap out this detached feeling, to move, to do anything except stare at myself. And for a moment I see the look of fear in my own face. I'm back in my body, but the hook in my stomach is no longer the only one. There are hooks everywhere, tearing and pulling at my skin, flesh and bones. They pull on me in every direction and it hurts. This is all very figurative. It hurts so much that I just can't bring myself to scream out. Help me. Resist the ghost's influence. Press tab. Oh! No. That one didn't even have a quick QTE. B. I wake from a deep slumber. Let's see, was that the entirety of that little split off? Interestingly enough. Hmm. There's a split off right here towards the top that I did not encounter. Yeah, that's very interesting. I wake from a deep slumber. It takes a while with the fuck that's still in my head and with my heavy limbs. But soon enough, I manage to look around. I'm in our bedroom already, although I do not recall going there. Or here. I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Luke Summers beside me, looking peaceful and angelic. I wouldn't really describe him as that. It doesn't matter. I'm safe and I feel better than ever. Tomorrow and better days will come. No. So let's do the other route. I knock three times. Waiting for any sort of reply yields me no results. And I've already touched the floor hatch far too many times than I what I'd like. I take a deep breath no, before reaching out again to whoever's inside. I've learned from experience that people respond better to kindness and frets. Shouting angrily would not help in coaxing that out. You, in the cellar, do come out. We don't want Luke waking up and finding you in there, do we? That man would go ballistic thinking someone was trying to steal his precious wine. Still nothing. You can have a good cry. Just not in there, yes? Why don't you come out here and we can have a cuppa and you can tell me all about whatever it is you're bawling about. With how long I'm standing here, however, I'm starting to think myself a fool. I did not want to acknowledge the ever feeling I have, especially as the wailing took an eerie turn. The thought of being played with didn't sit too well with me, and I had to stop myself from getting too hot-headed as I tried one more time. Now you come out of there! That is an order from the lady of the house, do you hear me? I don't think we want to say that. Why I ought to? I freeze as a hand clamps down on my shoulder. Who? The dread I've been feeling all this time makes itself known as I kneel. Unmoving, not even daring to breathe. I can feel my heart pounding against my chest. But the touch is gone, as quickly as it had seized me. It's only Johans I see when I look back. Apologies, madam, for touching you like that. No, you just saved my life. You were not responding to my voice, and you looked about ready to wake the whole mansion up. I was... Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting rather loud, wasn't I? But that crying woman in there, we must do something about her. He grows silent for a moment and just looks... concerned. At least I like to interpret it as concern, given how stoic our head butler usually is. Wherever, it must have been concern as he takes off a glove and presses the back of his hand on my forehead, before his worrisome inquiry. I beg your pardon, what crying woman? Are you feeling well, madam? In the cellar? Can't you hear her? Madam, Hannah, no one is down there. What? The cellar is locked. Only Luke and I have duplicates of the keys. Nobody is down there. Now how did Hannah get down there? Well, I mean, we know how, but you know, it's like a... It's one of those type of questions. I stare at him in disbelief. But when I listen once more, I hear no crying. Tucking at the hatch for good measure prove his words to be true, too. The thing won't budge unless I had a key, short of using power tools on it. Perhaps it is time for you to go to bed, madam. You are simply tired and hearing things, a perfectly normal human experience. But if you are still experiencing auditory hallucinations in the morning, you are free to consult with me. There's a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach as he helps me up to my feet. 
What he says makes sense, and who am I to question someone who used to be a doctor? I am just tired. That's it. Long day of moving, the interview, dealing with Luke. That's all dreamy of any proper sense. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. I just need some sleep, that's all. Of course I'm right. Go on, Zen. Gute Nacht. Good night, Johans. Good night, house. It's just fatigue. That's what I keep telling myself. Although I can't ignore the strange feeling in my gut. Either there's something wrong with this house or there's something wrong with my head. Sleep will be elusive tonight. So we either encounter the ghost or we don't. Which is gonna have... Paper gramifications down the line. I'm assuming. This is this little lock right here in that branch is what I'm very curious about. As we were seeing, like, there's a lot of locks we're missing. Uh, some of them probably have to do with Zachary, I imagine. Luke is already gone by the time I rise. There isn't a single hide nor hair of him to be found. I'm trying to call him on his mobile as a bus that only goes straight to his voicemail. That's twice in a row he's gone on me. And for him to disappear today of all days is every bit upsetting because of what's to come. Ghosts? The morning is once again filled with a whirlwind of activity. Fortunately, I'm much more refreshed as we... Well, I took a break from my responsibilities. The owners really like self-portraits. They are everywhere in this house. I haven't the faintest clue where Luke was yesterday. Today is going to be a busy day. Although unlike Wednesday, the master of the house isn't here right now. Absent once again from his duties. Hopefully he'll be back in time for the party. This is our house, after all. A grand housewarming party for the wonderful Ride Mansion. Every person of importance from Luxburn is invited, and there will be a few guests flying in as well. This is going to be kind of like the finale party in the Casper movie, where everyone comes into the haunted mansion. But uh, I'm just—it's a little much more sadistic than a few goofy ghosts playing pranks. Of course, there will be some people from the media, along with friends and acquaintances, who are made no less important, regardless of their status in society. Actually, that was an actual horror movie. I forget its name, but that was a plot of a famous horror movie. Marianne and I discuss business and last-minute touches to the house, before finalizing everything. Not there was much change from our original plans. Barring a huge addition to the property itself, the mansion is nearly 100% complete. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous, and in such a short time, too. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the right mansion. There won't be any more problems unless... Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom? Hopefully he gets the right idea about what to do with it. Luke and I had a small tip about making the second bedroom to a child's playroom, which I insisted is completely practical. In the end, he had to be acquiesced. I didn't give him any choice in the matter. I even bought this wonderful wooden crib from the antique store yesterday, including some toys. That's pretty nice. Just in case anyone brings her baby, of course. Besides, we have a little need for actual guest rooms. We hardly have guests who spend the night. If we absolutely have to, we often choose to foot the bill for their visit at one of our hotels instead, always at Luke's own assistance. And on the off chance that we actually let someone stay, the bedroom in the opposite wing is still up to the task. Oh no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. No, I did not agree to having him having a helipad. All right then. It's gonna be a horse vineyard pad. We discussed this already. Well, do we have any other concerns? Anything we need to put on our agenda before the party commences? No, I don't think so. Not unless Luke has anything else to say. Is he around then? It'd be best if we can note down his request right away, considering the scope of his usual ones. Around? No. Where is he? Who knows where? I don't. No, he's not around. She didn't have to point out the obvious now, did she? After seven long years, I'd already gotten used to him. I should be by now. Still not, apparently. But don't you have a party? I want nothing more than to complain. To whinge about how unfair this is. However, airing out one's dirty laundry is simply taboo among hunk society. I feel like that's taboo everywhere. To do so will make you the right target for the next dinner party chit-chat. 
Vultures, a lot of them, really. Or most of them, at least. There are always good ones, like Rochelle Lee. But put your trust in the wrong person, you'll find yourself eagerly picked apart. Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems, and he's just trying to cheer him up. Perhaps I'm being a bit too rash, a bit too hot-headed in divulging details. But I found myself clever with the plan to dress it up as gossip. Marianne's raised brow makes me unsure whether she's interested or not. I feel like your sprite always looks like that. Although that does make things better if she has no interest and therefore has no hidden intent to utilize whatever I might say to her. They've been married for a long time and they've hit a... How do they say it? A rough patch. Are you talking about yourself? His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. Yeah, it's not subtle at all. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? You were asking for my personal opinion on the matter, ma'am? Do you want me to be honest, or...? Do you want her to be honest or no? Be honest with me, Marianne. I don't need someone to sugarcoat it. Did that have to go up or did that go down? Check real quick. I don't know, Marianne. That went down, yeah. Be honest with me, Marianne. I don't need someone to sugarcoat it. I'm not some fragile thing that I'm just going to break down at the slightest thing. She hesitates, taking a sip of her coffee while I stare into my own cup of tea. The silence stretches on, and I almost believe that she'll never answer my question. I suppose I shouldn't blame her, putting her in a tight spot like this. Her hesitation is understandable, though I love to admit it, she simply wants this whole thing to stay professional. But then she speaks. If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? Yes, I thought that was pretty obvious. It wasn't so much a symbolism, but more like obviousism. It's my turn to hesitate now. I really didn't expect such a straightforward question. And to get to the heart of the matter? I suppose I'm not as clever as I'd like to think. Or is it really that bad that an outsider can see our little marital troubles? Surely we aren't that obvious, are we? We put up the act of a perfect couple for years, although it hadn't always been an act. Marianne is just more keen than an average person, of course. <laughs> oh, no, it's so obvious. But anyway, it's a necessity to her career, and she's been working so closely with us. Yes, that's it. Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then, I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. But, if the troubled husband with the neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Someone who won't even give him the time of the day. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. That's just my two pence worth, of course. So you're saying we... they should divorce? Nothing as drastic as that. If they're afraid that it might lead to just that, then maybe that is what's meant to happen in the first place. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. But it's just a short hiatus is all. Or, you know, couples therapy? Look, I'm really not the best person to ask about relationships. So grain of salt and all that. She trails off, having said her piece and leaves nothing but the smell of coffee and Earl Grey between us. There's a calm despite the nature of what has just been discussed. To say that her words make me start to think is an understatement. To say that I'm not considering her advice is a lie. And to say that this might just be the calm before the storm is a possibility. Lovers have had shorter marriages, yes, but plenty have celebrated long and happy ones as well. My own parents celebrated their choral anniversary before they passed away. But seven years? Seven years isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. It isn't a whole lot of time to see what and where our relationship can bring us. And at the same time, seven years. Well, it hasn't been entirely made up of unhappy years, has it? It won't last forever. It's not supposed to, anyway. I just dread the thought that might last for a very long time. I dread the thought that these small spats, these little disagreements, will turn into an all-out resentment. The idea that we will grow to hate each other with every fiber of our being scares me. 
I can't even pinpoint the exact moment when our blissful union turns sour. We can get through this, right? Let's look what the update kind of happened here. So lower branch. This is probably based on how we treat Luke throughout the thing. A little bit. Or it's based on this choice right here. But I know that I still do love him. And I feel that there's still a part of him that loves me in return. We just need to get our heads together and talk it out. Surely he will see some sense. <clears throat> there's a cough before Marianne clears her throat. I must have been quiet for so long. And I move to apologize when she stands up. We both end up on our feet, unsure of how to proceed. Some sort of odd, awkward shuffle occurs if we decide whether to sit back down or not. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party? Oh, you really must, Marianne. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Maybe bring a couple of bags and tubs, start shoveling food and drink into them and leaving very quickly. Busy, busy, busy! The proper way to enjoy a party. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. We'll see. So, if Foy can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. The scene outside the parlor is a great organized mess. Aside from our old household help, we hired the service of a temp agency which provides staff a right enterprise in the hospitality sector. Let's see. Alright. So we're going to be hitting a big branch pretty soon, based on our choices. Get prepared for that. Even our skilled staff cannot undertake a party of this size on their own. Waiters, busboys, hostesses, and our staff captains move on about in droves, carrying crockery and serveware good for several dozen people and then some. Chefs and bartenders tail after Johans, looking like scared little children, as he escorts them from the kitchen into the wine cellar. Oh god, I wouldn't want to go in there knowing what's down there. Is every employee here going to be doomed to this curse? Like, everyone who like touches this house? Because a lot of the workers who worked here and done the house up, like, apparently died. This, this entire place is just one big death trap. The producer stocks select like what they can be served at the party and what can be used for cooking. <laughs> We have a lot to do, and I believe we did not hire snails. Snails are for the dishes. A string quartet readies up to play for the evening, tweeting their instruments as they fill the air with gentle chatter. Floral decor where thousands fill vases, wreaths, and baskets while petals are scattered along the driveway up front. An eye sculpture of a reindeer is brought in carefully by a pair. It is followed by a simple cake, just a five-tier white chiffon, one with the white chocolate mousse, Fresh berries and a light dusting of edible gold leaf. But despite the fact that I told Marianne how I will attend to all of this, I find myself unable to focus or care for any of it, while Luke is still not back. I still have a discussion running in my mind, and looking at all of this, I only see Luke everywhere. These are all the grand things that Luke wanted to have for the party. I have won a small, elegant, and simple gathering, with only a select few invited, namely the people who I would actually trust to enter my home. I did not want any bloody politicians or paparazzi in here, no matter how used I am to catering to them. At least be here for your party. Damn it, Luke. Oh yeah, the paparazzi would have a field day of that. The entire thing screamed on Luke Wright. And I can't help but add another question to my growing list of queries. When did I lose myself? It's always about him nowadays, isn't it? What about Hannah Wright? What about Hannah Evans? I used to be my own woman. I made her own name her own career, and her own decisions. Sure, I was already a social butterfly. That I am, that I am still today. It wasn't all empty, shallow gossip and sitting pretty. I was also lauded for my knowledge and talent. Finance manager wasn't just handed to me, just because my father owned the company. I had insisted that I start at the bottom, so I could work my way up to the top and prove myself. And I did. I worked numbers, managed budgets, money and accounts, Analyzing the competition and market trends. There was a calculation of financial risk, cost reduction opportunities, auditor liaison, public relations, supervision of staff, and... Well, I generally had a huge slew of responsibilities. 
Admittedly, I was already quite the attention seeker even back then. Having dedicated most of my youth craving for my parents' approval. Feeling that, I turned to others. Looked for praise from anyone who could give it. However fleeting it all was. And Luke. Oh, Luke. The way he looked at me. The way he watched me and took a genuine interest. He had me disgustingly upset since day one, hasn't he? He saw me for me. Hannah Evans, with both my faults and my achievements. The man did dream like some damsel in distress or some prize to be won. I remember the nights before we were married. We talked about everything and anything. From big things like business, society, and philosophy to little things such as what we had for breakfast or what we liked cats or dogs more. We both prefer dogs. Good. Nowadays, I'm just Luke Wright's wife. It's mostly my fault, isn't it? They told me that husbands preferred wives who were docile and subordinate. Woman who will always be there for him. He would never outshine him in all aspects except beauty. A wife needs to be at home and tend to his needs, to have children and to take care of them in his absence. They said I have no business working anymore after I was married. I can blame society. But I listened. Before I can fall further into this introspective pit of self-loathing, someone calls for my attention. The guests have arrived, madam. This could be really awkward. And Luke? Running a bit late, I'm afraid. <sighs> late for his own party. That man, I swear. He's probably looking to make a dramatic entrance knowing him. I wonder if the curse did anything. Open the doors then. We mustn't hurry. Cars line up the driveway, prepping the front of the mansion with vehicles of every kind. Grand tourers, supercars, even the odd, odd high-end muscle car too. Convertibles, grand saloons, and luxury cars can be seen being parked by valets. This is one of those generic tracks you can get. That I've heard so many times. A handful of cabs drive off, possibly for those who find it's too troublesome to bring their own cars. There are at least two different media vans as well. They're all here for what may be considered the biggest event of the year for Luxborn. So far. Who knows what we'll plan for the winter holidays? Welcome! Welcome, everyone! Please, make yourselves at home! And if you happen to see a ghost girl, or a zombie, or hear any weird noises, just ignore it. Or wave. Because that's the last thing you're gonna do. But enjoy the party. We have hors d'oeuvres, we have alcohol. It's good stuff. Some of the guests idle, enjoying the warm, if not strange, sunshine we were experiencing before gloomy skies inevitably return. They greet acquaintances and friends with warm smiles, ever less so. From where I stand, I can see the hierarchy of power, the ties that bind these individuals here, whether through convenience or necessity. However, there are also a few who are not here to further cement their current place in high society. Hello? How did you arrive here? Such as that young man with his oriental hair. Ignored of the looks he receives from women and men alike. Be careful with Shirley, alright? Shirley, you can't be serious. Man from the Orient? <laughs> really? Or that rose-haired woman talking on her phone, while well, she looks unsure why she's here exactly. Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mom. Did you all go to this party while Isabella was, like, having a nightmare? Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. Where did this happen in the timeline? I see Zachary, the photographer, as well. He talks to a few of the other media crew of an era of familiarity. I was just here a few days ago, yeah. Yeah, and the inside is huge, but the staff are pretty helpful if you get lost. <laughs> I guess if I load into Isabella's, I should be able to, uh... Actually... Let me see if I can do something here. Timeline. Well, this is my timeline, sadly. Well, no, October 24th, here we go. This is what happened to Isabella right here. So no one's noticed Isabella might be missing or in trouble? Damn. And then there are people like the Chief Inspector. People who I can never be too sure about. People who stand on the border between being suspicious and being trustworthy. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Husband still missing, I see. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle, Lee. The doctors again. Uh, she told me she'll just be in the gardens. Bet she's lying and that she's somewhere around mingling, gossiping with the other ladies. 
It's no offense, but that seems to be all you ladies do at these parties. You mean talk to other people at a party? And aren't you gossiping right now? Yes, well, what about Luke? Should we file a missing persons report now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? He's around. <laughs> you know, I can tell if someone's bluffing. Don't tell me, let me guess. He's finally drunken himself to death and not wanting a scandal. You've hidden his body. You know, I'm not too sure. You may or may not be right. We'll find out later. I was wanting to give this housewarming gift to him personally, too. It's a plate that holds a wine glass so he can stop killing himself with liquid lunches. Looks like it's too late for that. Nothing like that. Besides, this is a hardly polite conversation. Oh, relax. I'm just trying to be cheeky to lighten the mood. It's not like I want Luke dead. The man doesn't serve dodgy plonk like the others when I visit, and he pays his respects well enough. Could use a glass of wine or three, actually. Rochelle's been in a horrid mood. Threw a stilettos at me the other day and almost took an eye out. I wonder why. Not sure if this is how it usually goes, but I blame the pregnancy. I wouldn't know, would I? Still no plans for a baby. I guess that's for the best. If it's this bad now, I can't even imagine how bad it'll be when that little baby bump becomes huge. Have I mentioned how I don't trust him, no matter how hard I try to do so? At least he brought a gift, I suppose. Why don't you just go inside and have some wine, Lee? Think I will, thanks. Greetings such as these carry on as the guests continue to trickle in. Wherever we have short conversations or merely shake hands and nod heads, I make sure to attend and welcome each of them. As the first hour passes by, and the rest of the stragglers and I adjourn to the ballroom. Any latecomers will have the attention of the porter instead. I have other duties to attend to now. Like looking at this generic background of dancers. Hosting parties is always the same old song and dance, no matter how big or small it is. You make sure your guests are well fed, have good company, and have them generally enjoy themselves. So when my opening remarks are done, when the band has started to play and the guests have started eating, I find myself wandering around aimlessly unless I'm pulled aside. For a while, I stay with a small group and entertain them before excusing myself. And when they're not anymore watching me, I end up watching them. When they don't listen, I do. A local banker is having trouble with his daughter. He wishes to marry her off, but she wants nothing more than but to make music. One of our hotel managers worry about the stolen belongings of one of his patrons. A failing in security which should be brought up to hire a 40 soon. Our mayor. Well, his cat died. Then there is that rose-haired woman once again. It's hard not to notice her with her distinctive locks. She also likes the grace that the Evers ladies have. Though that does not make her any less beautiful. Her stance and air she exudes, instead are strong, and they make her stand out despite her casual attire, which she's been wearing for the past six days. Many men have already given her their attention, though each invitation as dance has been turned down. I approach intrigued, although it is no great mystery what occupies her own attention, but the glance she keeps saying towards the boy of the oriental hair. She remains unaware though, even as I stand beside her, pretending that I am there for a drink. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Oh, well, you know we're more truthful of yourself. Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Maybe a change of outfit would have been fine too. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the parvenu, those who climb, that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black-haired beauty, isn't he? Black-haired Soma Cruz waltzes on over. The boy comes over but I do nothing to speak any softer. He merely passes by, and it is a wonder he doesn't hear what I say. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down his offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash. That's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend, then? Because that would explain those rejections. Initiate awkward conversation over alcohol. In all my life, I've never seen a face grow red so fast. Hey, it matches your hair. The shade of her hair did not help as well. This is the most pink I've seen on a person, really. What? No, that's ridiculous. 
He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Many here would be happy to hear it. And I haven't been looking at him. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Although I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. Oh, it's both. It's anime. It's more the latter, currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. I waver as I feel the burning of someone's stairs. It is chilling. And though I'm used to enduring the gaze of others, this one makes the hairs on my back and my neck stand up. Wait. No. Why do you keep doing this to me? My attention is pulled from the girl and I see a woman staring. Dark haired and dirty. She looks more like a beggar than a guest. And half the mind to call security at her when her mouth breaks out into a grin. All I hear is her laughing. You look a little bit different than last time, which is interesting. Taunting. Her stare makes my blood run cold. She looks at me like I'm nothing but a pig to slaughter for her amusement. It makes my hand shake and I nearly drop my drink. But then in a blink, she's gone and the... And the buzz of the party returns. I'll keep that in mind, but... Are you alright? Yes. You look like you've seen sorry. a ghost. I just thought I saw something strange. I must be the trick of the light. I'm waiting for that line to drop. I want to see that line drop. Anyway, on a right, as you must already know. Rebecca Gales. Gales, Gales, Gales. The name is familiar, like a fond memory. It's got a reunion achievement? I recall a kind lady. A private tutor who treated me like her own daughter when I was young. She'd even bring me food when there was no need to do so. Usually stovies, which I honestly hadn't been so too keen about, though I ate them nonetheless because she brought them for me. Hmm. Ariane got updated? Maybe that's from before? Oh, the professor! And your little Becky! <sighs> My parents couldn't make it since they're in Scotland right now. And mom says hi, by the way. I like how your name changes. But yeah, that's me. Little Becky. We met once before. Yes, oh, I remember you. You were the cutest little thing with glasses. And when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lab called something with an A. Ashhole. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, Alexander. Andrew? Ardvark? Arfur? The more and less off names, the more red and the more quiet Becky gets. She starts to look a bit miserable as her body language shows discomfort and stiffness. Perhaps I've triggered a horrid childhood memory. Does no one care about Isabella? Look! Everyone's here enjoying a party! You know how many days it's been? You know how many days? A lot. So this does actually link up everything. So we actually can kind of view the timeline as we go. She really had been mean when she visited with her mother. I don't quite remember all of it. Ashton! Ash! That man is that boy! The same one. Oof. Oh goodness me, after all these years! Oof. I can see why though. He's quite dashing. You don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down. I'm so sorry, but it really is cute. And a tad bit sad. Oof. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. Please, Honor's fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Don't you Ouch. worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. No, they won't. Not in this game. I'm not Maybe too one of the endings they will. That, am I? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? Uh, the idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. If you love them, 
You have to fight for it, right? You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Like everything, you have so to work at it. So this is something you should be it. like, this is like your own vice you should be taking. <laughs> but what do I know? There's a grimace. Although she starts to relax around my presence. How long has it been since we met as children? Certainly a long time. She was tiny back then, if I recall correctly. I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. But have you told him how you feel? And it's been what? 20 years? 17, actually. But no, not yet. He can be a bit... dense. I was hoping that maybe he'd notice on his own and... He's not psychic. Well, that won't do. What if you two become husband and wife? He's not to be dense when he's sworn himself to another person. Why, you might just as well consider leaving before the day's even begun. If that happens, I'll have to give him a good ear bashing, won't I? Whoever anyone ends up with, it's not going to be a perfect relationship anyway. There's going to be things you'll love and things you'll hate about the other person. We're just humans. It's funny. Here I am, trying to give you advice when you did the very same thing back then. I remember you giving me a makeover when we were still kids. And you were the first I told anyone about my... <laughs> crush. I do remember now that she mentions it. Did they give her that yellow summer dress or the pink blouse and petticoat? She must have kept some of what I said in mind. It feels ridiculous remembering all that, all that years later. Talking about boys and how they go crazy for pretty girls, as if it's some gospel every woman should adhere to. It was so easy to say such things then, with me not knowing any better. Though, looking at her now, she must have kept some of what I said in mind. Perhaps I did say something good at that time, enough for her to take it to heart. But all that didn't matter in the moment since I'm all over what she's just said in my head. What Becky told me is very different from what Marianne told me. There is no time to ponder over that, however, as a hush descends upon the once lively crowd. The music of strings and chairs slows to a grinding halt as the doors from the foyer opens. The last late comer should have arrived moments ago. It's Luke, isn't it? And anyone else this late would simply be too embarrassed to show their face. So this can be only one person. Or rather, one man. There's only one man who is audacious enough to arrive at his own party so late. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. Oh, and you already have alcohol in your hand. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. Like I, who was raised in the spotlight and simply grew used to its presence, he sought it out every chance he could, even when there was no spotlight that shone. And I'll never put it against him when he smiles like that. He did so quite brilliantly under the scrutiny when he challenged his showmanship. You can tell by the way people's eyes light up as he speaks. How they listen, enraptured, even if all he's doing is a simple greeting. A little wave of his hands here, and a little smile there, and a bit of swagger. I always tell him that, if he's not to be a businessman, he'll do well as an entertainer. I love the sight of him. Especially when he looks at me and he beckons me over to humbly share his place. Not a single second is wasted as I excuse myself from Becky's side and I make my way to Luke's. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> oh my god. So, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. There's a round of applause, cheers, and even some hoots. A bit cheesy. Still pretty smooth delivery, but you know, a bit campy. Guests approach us left and right to shake Luke's hand and greet him personally. Praises on their lips. It's because of this that I did not see her. I did not see her until she was dangerously close, with fury in her eyes and she's already spitting venom. Who? Johans restrains her, taking her not to necess unnecessarily harm the pregnant woman. Oh no. That does little to deter her rage. And the man has no choice but to let her go, unless an unborn child is hurt. Although it might be too late for that, as I see an empty glass of wine in her hand. How much has she imbibbed in? Are you feeling ill, Rochelle? That's Rochelle. Perhaps you need to sit down and... Hmm. No! Shut it, you monster! I ain't talking to you! I'm talking to this scumbag over here! 
You bloody bastard standing there with your smarmy smile. She interrupts me, jabbing her finger in my direction before she rounds on Luke. Even as whispers and murmurs break out among the guests, all I can focus on is the heat of the moment. Obviously intoxicated, judging by the smell of alcohol in her breath. I'm not ticked off about this little display of hers, at least not yet. But I am absolutely pissed by the fact that she endangered her own baby by drinking. There is a considerable amount of restraint and grace that I must exercise while I wait for her tantrum to subside. I keep a patient, if tight, smile on my face. Luke's expression on their hand is indecipherable. Watch your tongue! You're on thin ice, Rochelle! Looks like a very, very angry, angry Draco Malfoy. Where's your husband? Who even invited you? I did. And I told you with great emphasis not to. Now we have a drunk, hormonal, pregnant woman causing a stir. What is even going on? I'm just about to ask that same exact thing. I don't know. But Rochelle, do calm down before you hurt yourself. I can't understand a word you're saying. Where is that husband of yours? Lee, collect your wife right now. Don't you fucking talk like I'm not here and you're not responsible, you ass. You told me that I should wait for you in the gardens. Ooh, we're getting some heavy drama right here. Excuse me. What is this nonsense you're going on about? Crazy talk. That's all it is. Just completely and utterly mad. Has anyone seen the chief inspector? I am pregnant with your little bastard. You promised me you'll take responsibility. Oh boy. God damn it, Luke. I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me. What? What? What do you mean you're pregnant with? Luke, is this true? Lies and slander, woman! Security! Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! No, no, you do not do this to me! I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband! I told you to leave that damn wife of yours! So this is the one that that Hannah considers her best friend. Look at her! Does she look like she wants a baby? She does, actually, if you want to like, correct this. Does she look like she could take care of a baby? Probably, yeah. It is now that Johans returns with security, along with a concerned-looking Officer Lee. They surround her and move to escort the hysterical woman. Judging by his pale face, he heard the whole thing, and I feel nothing but pity for the man. I'm so sorry for her behavior. She's been under a lot of stress. And the alcohol. Talking nonsense, that's all it is. You're not allowed to drink because of the baby, Shelley. What are you thinking? Nothing to see here, people. Move along. Is there really nothing here but the ramblings of a drunk? Yes, that's right. There's no way that what Rochelle says is the truth. What she says doesn't match up. I know, Luke. If such a scandalous meetings are to be arranged, he won't do it in such an exposed place. Especially not near his precious flowers. And he definitely won't promise responsibility over a child, unless it can be helped. Besides, Luke will never... He'll never go so far as to sleep with another woman, right? Okay, fine, who am I kidding? If I'm to be completely honest with myself, he might cheat. With a bit of temptation and a bit of alcohol, he just might. And doesn't that just make my blood boil? To even think of the slightest possibility of infidelity. Lee isn't too far off when he told me how Luke still acted like some young hotshot bachelor. He starts to make me think. It's important decision, save the game. Okay, so... Actually, we've been forced into the southern route at the moment. There is a middle route, and then there is a northern route, which we've completely bypassed. Alright. Let's go with a top option for now. Me, Mariana, at a point. If I am frustrated, if I am unhappy, maybe a break is needed. Some type of part might be just what the doctor ordered. Time for to clear our heads and to think for ourselves, or for myself to be exact. Because looking at this mess before me just brings me nothing but distress. I feel a bit nauseous, actually, now that I think about it. Luke's too busy making a scene to notice, and a concerned Becky pulls me to the side. She looks as disturbed as I am by this sudden turn of events. 
I'm not a big fan of drama. Definitely not used to it, at any rate. Not surprising, as her parents were lovely yet simple people. Uh, hey! I figured you could use the save. You looked like you weren't doing too hot back there. Oh, I already made the save. Uh, do we need to call a doctor or something? Oh no, I'm... I'll just be needing some fresh air, that's all. Some help getting out of here would be much appreciated. Sure, that won't be a problem. I wanted to get away from this drama too anyway. Just... Hey, Zachary! Hey, Zach! At the mention of his name, I can't help but seek him out in the crowd as he makes his way over. They know each other. Becca! This is a real me- uh, Oh, hey, Miss Wright. If I'm to assign a random number to dictate the odds of having two of my acquaintances know each other, I'll say the odds are one out of a thousand. Then again, we are in a video game. And if this is any other situation, I wouldn't have been suspicious. It isn't completely impossible to have two random strangers who have met on separate occasions to know each other, and what will be complete random happenstance. It's just that it's been faked before to try and dupe me because of who I am, and who I am married to. But right now, coincidence or not, I'm just grateful for the help. As long as it doesn't turn them into kidnapping anyway. Hello, Zachary. I told you to call me Hana. Did I not? Yeah, you did. So, this is what you called me for. We gonna get Hana out of here? I can see that they're friends. Not terribly close ones, but friends nonetheless. That'd be great. They make quick work of getting us through the crowd. The people part because of Zachary's broad build, even if they want to approach me. If that is enough, Becky's pointy glare keeps them at bay. We got the main tank, we got the mage, and we're the healer. Just go right through. We even make it out of the ballroom without any untoward incident. Though judging by the commotion in the other room, the same cannot be said about the unexpected eviction. I really do need the fresh air. I need to be away from those noisy parkers. I need to be away from Luke. This is a good start as any. Hey, I gotta go back in there. Completely forgot my bag like an airhead. And I'll see if I can tag Ash on the way out. You'll be fine here, right, Hana? Not to worry, dearie. I'll just be right here. Zack will be with you if you need anything. Becky boxed at the idea of going back into the ballroom. Anyone who hasn't yet would have realized I'm gone by now. And those busy buddies will be gossiping about how I left the building of two unknowns. Along with what just transpired, stories both inaccurate and made up will be spread by the night's end. It all matters very little in the grand scheme of things, of course. I won't even bother trying to quell them by returning to the fray. That leaves me with... Zachary... Yeah, you need something? I was only going to say how nice it is to see you again. Oh, okay. I can see the tension in the line of his shoulders. Odd how awkward he is, when this isn't our first meeting. It meant on professional terms, certainly, but I like to think it was friendly. Or I was friendly, rather. Nonetheless, I do not push issue about the apparent discomfort when we were left alone. Not right away, at any rate. I know my curiosity will get the bear of me soon. Before I can say anything, however, he speaks up. You okay there, Hana? I mean, of course you're not okay after what happened in there. I mean, th th that was terrible, but you're not gonna just fall down and faint or anything, right? I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. A beat. I should be asking you the same thing. I remember you being a lot more eloquent. Oh yeah, I'm just not too good with staying too long in a crowded room. Or handling intense drama, you know. Sorry about my clothes, didn't think there'd be a dress code. Not that I have anything that nice to wear to a shindig like this. No, it's okay, no one's changing their outfits or sprites for this game. <laughs> I dig nice, small, simple parties, so this is a real doozy for me. And do you host your own nice, small, and simple parties often? Only when there's occasion, birthdays, and stuff. Those are a lot more fun for me, and I can be a lot more selective about letting only the people I'm cool with attend, right? I get to pick the food, too. Of course, I make most of them myself. There's usually a dozen people or less, and all we really do is just hang out. Maybe do some grilling, karaoke, dancing, you know, the usual. That sounds nice. Yeah. You sure you're all right? You aren't exactly being eloquent yourself, as you put it. I hey man, that was a lot of drama bombs. You must have something you want to get off your chest. I don't know, Zachary. What am I supposed to say? You can scream merd if you want. I won't snitch. You want to know what I think? How I feel? 
I think my friend may have slept with my husband. At least, I'm pretty sure she isn't pregnant with his baby, which isn't much now, is it? My husband is a selfish, pretentious, bloody sack of shite, and... Ugh, you know what? I don't give a flying fuck anymore! My god! Well, that ain't good. Not giving a crap won't make the problem go away. I'm going to ask him for a break, Zachary. I'm not going to pretend that there isn't a problem, but I just need to step back. Fair enough. As long as you don't just up and disappear on him, I suppose. Yes. Now can we please stop talking about him? Tell me more about your small, simple parties. Karaoke and dancing. How does that even go together? Well, you hold a beer in one hand, and you have an anime remix in the other. Simple, really. We hope Ash doesn't take the mic, put on a bit of fun music, and just dance. Not that I can. But there ain't nothing complex about it. You can't be that bad. I'm pretty good with the twist. Or, well, that's what they tell me at least. I think they're just being nice. I'm sure it just looks awkward. Making more saves. Can I have so many pages of saves? Won't be enough. I've learned that men tend to exaggerate. You can't honestly be that bad, can you? What? Do you need a demonstration? That would be preferable, yes. It's not like there's music here, Hana. Come on. I could barely dance with music, and I, I, I don't want to be dancing alone. I'll just look silly. I'm going to start beatboxing pretty soon here. Imagine, mon ami. You are an artiste, are you not? With your photos and films and your guitar. You must know notes to play an instrument. Find a melody and a beat. Would it be such a stretch of the imagination? And don't fret, I will gladly be your partner. I can tell by his expression that he's flushed, embarrassed. No more protests escape him, and he focuses with a slight tilt of his head. He starts to hum a little tune. I drag him into the gardens while we go for the motions, and he gains courage. The farther we are from other people, and we just dance. This is very awkward timing right after what we just experienced. Though he stumbles at first, unsure and bashful. <laughs> Where did you even learn to dance, Zack? The 60s want their moves back, honestly. I'm sorry, but with the way your eyes are angled, it looks like they're only going in one direction, if you know what I mean. The college of two left feet, obviously. And I'll have you know the twist is still an awesome dance. We're happy and we're having fun. Even if Zachary fumbles with his steps into the funniest, honest movements that anyone can pass off as dancing, there's no need to impress anyone. However, not even each other. And this is the most I've smiled and laughed in a long time. It is simple. Simple is nice. <laughs> 